Hi, I'm Kirk Jowers. And I'm we are fortunate to have Dr. Russell Osgathorpe as the expert to lead us through this series. Dr. Osgathorpe, of course, is the Chief Medical Officer of doTERRA and perhaps more importantly for the purposes of, of this series of communications, he is a pediatric infectious diseases specialist. Prior to joining doTERRA, Dr. Osgathorpe was a practicing physician and medical executive within a leading healthcare system for more than a decade. Russ, we're so fortunate to have you with us today. Nice to be with you, Kirk. So let's jump into this. So much happens every day that we want to keep you informed of what the most critical updates are of each day. Let me just pause real quick on, on the World Health Organization. What is the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic? And is there something significant for us to know about that declaration? That's an important question. So an epidemic is local spread of an infectious disease. A pandemic is where the disease will move globally. And not only does it move globally, but it does so with maintained, sustained transmission. And this level of transmission is what led to the declaration by the World Health Organization that COVID-19 was a pandemic. We are going to have uh, two foundational episodes um, that will be a little longer, a little more in detail, that will talk about the spread of the disease, uh, the importance of, of, of some of these measures you just mm -hmm. mentioned. Um, but in an effort to keep these daily updates concise, um, I'm going to move to the empower and encourage part of our episode. What on this first episode do people need to know to keep themselves safe and to be responsible citizens? I think the most important thing that people should understand is, is that we want to limit the spread of this virus as much as we can. The way we talk about it as infectious disease docs is we want to flatten the curve. So what that means is, is instead of seeing cases concentrated in a short time frame, like three or four months across the United States or in any other country of the world, we would like to see those cases spread out over time. If we can spread those cases out over time, then we don't overwhelm our hospital infrastructure, those that work in ICUs and um, emergency departments, they'll be able to respond because they'll have the capacity to do so. But if a large influx of patients hits our medical system all at once, then we have a real problem. And we've seen some of that happen across the world as this virus has moved. So as the virus moves through the globe, we wanna try and as hard as we can to make those cases spread out over time. And there are ways to do that. That makes a lot of sense. So that's from a community perspective, that's why we're seeing this. Um, from an individual perspective, I think everyone has seen these guidelines, but I still see people not washing their hands all the time. Can you tell us yeah. what are the, the four or five steps that people need to do individually to play a role? The World Health Organization and in the United States, the CDC has a, a, a very excellent list of things that we can do to limit the spread or transmission of this virus, to flatten that curve. And the most important thing that we can do is to wash our hands. Washing our hands, I know everybody's heard it a hundred times, but it is the most effective method of limiting transmission, even amongst close contacts. So washing our hands before we prepare meals, uh, after we've been out and about, after we're shaking hands with people or interacting with others, washing hands limits transmission. Second, if you are sick, if you have symptoms of respiratory disease, like from a viral illness like COVID, whether that is cough or fever, runny nose, congestion, sore throat, you want to limit your exposure to others. You want to stay inside and not expose others. So, so wash hands, stay home when you're sick. Yep. Um, if you can't wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is a great method of cleansing your hands from viral particles. Um, hand washing is equally as effective. So even in where there are shortages of hand sanitizer, soap and water works beautifully. Perfect. Um, so many additional questions. As I mentioned, on the same platform that you're watching this, um, we will have a found, two foundational episodes that we'll talk about what is COVID-19, and we'll go into all of those little details. And then a second episode, which we'll talk about uh, the spread, how it is spread, and how we can slow that spread. Uh, any words of, uh, of advice uh, to leave us with today? Uh, there's a lot of panic 
that is going on in the world today around COVID-19. I think what I would say to all those who are worried about COVID-19 is, is that you can limit the spread of this virus. If we act together as a, as a nation, as a, as a country, as, as a people, we can actually flatten that curve. It takes united effort. It takes being uncomfortable. But if we just wash our hands, limit contact with those that are sick, limit, if we are sick, our contact with others, um, we can decrease the transmission of the disease and make it possible for our healthcare institutions to respond appropriately when we need them. Don't give in to, to panic. Care for one another, take care of each other, and do so by limiting social contact, social distancing, washing your hands. We'll say these things over and over again, and the reason we do is because they work. We say these things over and over again because they work. Take care of each other um, by doing these things, and you'll be surprised at what will take place. We will flatten that curve. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.